Hi there. So in today's video, I'm going to let you inside, give you a little sneak peek at one of the videos that I posted on my Patreon. But before I do that, I want to answer your questions because ultimately I want to share the knowledge that I have about painting with you. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and let me know. But for my last video, I got a question from Bax365. Any tips for getting back into oil painting? And well, yes, I have a ton of tips on that. It's kind of a broad and open-ended question. So I'm just going to kind of run with it a little bit. Um, one of the things I would recommend doing when getting back into oil painting is one, taking it really slow. I think my temptation, at least as an artist, if I'm away from my paints for a long time, is to rush things along or feel like you need to be kind of in the groove like you were maybe before. And I think that's a real big failing that I often see artists make. We don't give ourselves enough grace a lot of the time to kind of slowly work back into a painting and kind of taking things slow and just kind of enjoying it. So one, enjoy it, take it slow, kind of treat it like an old friend that you're becoming reacquainted with that you're, you haven't seen in a long time. That's kind of how I like to refer to it as. And then two, um, do what I'm doing here in this extra footage. I am gessoing my canvas. This is, if you have gesso lying around, I wouldn't necessarily go out and buy a bunch of gesso just for this purpose. But if you have gesso lying around and you have a pre-primed canvas that you're working with, those canvases, the gesso is rolled onto the canvas and it doesn't really get into those nooks and crannies that the weave of the canvas has. So by adding one single layer, just smoothly applied, will fill in those gaps and make the surface texture of your canvas a lot smoother. It makes the painting process, I think, more enjoyable. It makes the brush kind of glide across the canvas and it can just make painting that much easier, especially if you've been away from the studio for a while. But now here's a more in-depth look at how I painted this nose. Hi everyone, I wanted to kind of let you in behind the scenes to see more detailed version of how I painted the nose in this painting behind me. Painting is such a meditative, slow process that showing the whole kind of gamut or range of what happens in the studio is really challenging. And it can leave you kind of wondering what goes into kind of creating the paintings that I make. Uh, there's so many brush strokes that I leave out, so this is a way to kind of dive into that let you see almost all the brush strokes that I made throughout the painting process of making this nose and giving you a little detail and insight into what's going on in my mind as I'm painting that. So I'm going to narrate over these clips and let you look at this whole process from start to finish. So to begin with, we are painting these dark areas in the nose first. This is a mixture of our burnt sienna and verdian green, leaning more towards green in this instance. I kind of want those nostrils to have a really deep, dark tone to them and a cool note as well. Right now I'm also mixing in a kind of yellow ochre, that cadmium red mixture, looking for something not too vibrant, but something to just kind of pull that skin out from underneath the nostril. I'm concerned about the form that's happening there and creating that kind of transition is really important. Right now I'm thinking about, all right, how do I create a almost a base tone, a base skin tone that's going to apply to most of the nose? I'm not going to use it entirely just yet, but just using it ever so gently, ever so slightly up front. And I'm going to lay that down right here in the nostril. I'm not going to keep it there. It will kind of gives me a clear indication at least of where my tones are. So putting in something that's closer to a highlight next to the shadow gives me within my mind a concept or range of what I'm working with. You'll see here me kind of placing down that blue tone and then painting over it with some yellow ochres and then laying in, shaping in that shadow up there. This is just hinting at that roundness that I want to in indicate, implicate up there on the point of the nose. And then coming back in and mixing kind of this blue gray over it. This blue gray won't stay that bright, but I am trying to hint at that tone, that undertone that is happening there. Once again, kind of grabbing some of those reds and pulling it back up. This part of the process isn't super uh, fun, I don't think, to watch always, but um, I enjoy painting it. Some yellows will serve as guide points, those transitional tones, 
you'll notice that I've laid down on either side there. And again, mixing in that skin tone is really important here. Now I'm trying to get right back to that space that will be the perfect highlight. And then you'll see we're about to lay that down over here. And we do, I'm just gonna do that gently. I know I already have these kind of cushioning yellows around. And I can kind of bring those back in to soften that. I don't want that to be too sharp of an edge. I kind of want it to feel like that light is kind of dancing across the nose there. And up on the point up there, I really am going to try and create some complexity. That burnt sienna in the dark and then back to blue, back to that pink will create a nice transition. Those colors, I kind of love how they work together, creating that beautiful gradation. And a lot of the colors in my, my palette are this earthier tones that will work well together. It's just a matter of figuring out, all right, what is exactly going to go back and forth here? The underside of this nose, for example, we're going to kind of lean in on some more of those warmer yellow ochres. Um, it has a really distinct quality that's different than the pinks that we see really kind of prominent in the tip of the nose. Using that as kind of the background or the color that's shifting in the shadow mostly and using blue as more of a highlighting color in those areas will work in a way that's maybe different than say those pinks that we were painting up top where the blue is that transitional tone. We're gonna bring in some of those skin tones again though, but we're gonna paint that gently, kind of letting the quality of the oil paint allow it to blend and then bringing those blues back in. And here I'm just going to try and lay down some just more solid strokes of color. There's more vibrant, prominent highlights. This is really just going to allow us to kind of shape and move the form. And it might seem like a lot is going on here in terms of going back and forth between color. That's just kind of always what's happening in my process. I'm always kind of reconsidering, all right, how can I adjust this color to make it more accurate and more lifelike? And you'll realize that a lot of skin tones have these undertones and kind of overlaying qualities. And so in some sense, I'm kind of at war, battling, wrestling with what's on the surface, what's kind of shining through underneath that skin tone, and how do I kind of create that hidden vibrancy that's underneath all of it? Over here, I'm kind of doing that with the nostril, creating highlights around it, and yet touching in on those like mid-tones, this pink wrapping around the nostril right there is kind of this beautiful accent. But I'm gonna cut back in with a, that yellow ochre because I know that there's gonna be that subtle shift there from that highlight down to the nostril and that yellow ochre is going to work well. It's going to blend with that cadmium red and kind of pull us back, let it wrap back into the nostril. But I also know that that isn't just kind of how it ends. I, I need to add in these blues, these kind of cooler shifts because as these kind of pink areas really lighten up, there is a coolness to them. Um, they, they do kind of pull that to the surface. But I'm also kind of looking ahead right now, defining and shaping kind of the back side of that nose where the nostril is or where it kind of curves back in on itself. There's a shadow back there by virtue of the direction of the lighting. And I'm just gonna kind of map that in. It's not gonna be perfect. I will touch it up in a bit but I'm kind of giving myself some guidelines to work with once again. This isn't how everybody paints, but this is definitely how I paint. I could easily just kind of throw in one solid color and then paint into that. I find that you lose complexity along the way when you paint that way. So being able to kind of slow down and just kind of lay in color bit by bit like this might be a little more time intensive, but I think the result is a lot of beautiful movement going on. Colors kind of butting up right next to, against each other. And you get little moments like this where I'm just gonna kind of paint that red in right there. And that's a red that I kind of grabbed. I mixed it with some blue prior to laying it down on the canvas here because it has that deepness to it. And it's going to kind of shift away from a highlight into the shadow. So there's gonna be some blue undertones there, but it's also deep, right? It's kind of, we're at the point of the nose. And so there is that kind of deep red up there. 
And I've kind of worked around this, highlight this kind of this cutting edge of the nostril that's kind of facing most towards the light. So now we're kind of coming back to that, adding in these kind of brighter highlighting strokes and defining that, shaping that, being really cognizant and aware of the way that is going to fade and shift back into shadow, not kind of overdoing it, leaving room for kind of a gradation to happen there, but allowing that white to really pop. We don't want to have to overwork it too much if we can avoid it. Even kind of laying in kind of those darker tones again, we can build up to that. It doesn't have to all be perfect in one go, but we want the bulk of the colors we lay down to be pretty close to perfect, or at least kind of in the range that we want them in. I don't want to have to kind of come back and rework and rework and rework. I want to kind of paint an area, be pretty close to done with it, be able to make any small minor adjustments that I can later. But we don't have to really dive into that here. We're just kind of building and building bit by bit. You see I add these little blues in there, some subtle little strokes and Unfortunately, we're kind of getting some glare on the far side of the nose, but that's okay. At least it's not the focal point at the moment. And that's how I painted this nose. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's just a quick little jump into my creative process and hopefully teaching you a little something along the way that it's okay to kind of have that back and forth action happening while in the painting process. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we also don't want to just kind of lay in huge globs and bits of color in an effort to speed it along. We want to be really intentional with our time in the studio, really intentional with the paintings that we're making. And in the end, with that intentionality, we'll create something that's, I think, worth viewing later. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, drop me a message, anything like that. Um, I love kind of answering that, and I want to be a resource for you in your own painting journey. So until next time, I hope you have a great day.